I'm Annette Pasternak, the Stop Skin Picking Coach. So this video is meant to be educational. It is not medical advice. For that, you have to see a doctor. In this video, we'll discuss the use of the amino acid supplement and acetylcysteine, NAC for short, for compulsive skin picking. We'll touch on some other benefits of NAC, discuss why it's no longer on Amazon, and see where you can get it now. So a few substances have been tested to see if they work to reduce skin picking, um, but these all have returned no or mixed results. Until this research study here on NAC for skin picking, this was a 12-week randomized clinical trial comparing NAC to a placebo. So the participants began taking 1,200 milligrams of NAC. They ramped up to 3,000 milligrams by week six and all of the participants were assessed every three weeks during the trial using two scales measuring skin picking severity and improvement. So there were 32 people taking the NAC that completed the study and 21 people taking the placebo. Now in this type of study, participants don't know which they have. The idea of this placebo is that there's generally some effect simply from taking anything. <laughs> something because if we are taking something, we tend to believe we have some expectation that we're actually going to get better from it. So we do. After 12 weeks, one skin picking scale showed those taking NAC had 38.3% reduction in their symptoms compared to 20, uh, sorry, compared to 19.3% for the placebo. So around twice as much reduction in symptoms. The other scale showed that 47% of participants taking NAC were either much improved or very much improved compared to 19% of those taking placebo. So clearly NAC is working for some people and it might work for you. Uh, you would need to try it and see. It's worked for several of my clients. Many of them um, have noticed improvements in their picking with the NAC, also in their pulling some of them hair pulling. Also keep in mind how much they were taking in this study. So a lot of people will just hear, oh, NAC, they'll buy a bottle and they'll take just one 600 milligram capsule each day. But in this study, they were taking 3000. So, you know, you would want to work up to the 3000 to see, to really be able to know whether this works for you or not. Also an important note, most people do recommend taking NAC on an empty stomach an hour before meals for it to be best absorbable, but if you have some nausea, you can try it with food, okay? It's generally very safe. There are very few side effects, nausea being the most common. Okay, so how does the NAC work? How does it work against skin picking? Well, the researchers posed two possibilities. First, it could be because NAC increases the extracellular levels of the neurotransmitter glutamate in the nucleus accumbens, which is a part of the brain that's implicated in reward-seeking behavior, and so it's associated with addictions and compulsive behavior. Or it may be because NAC is an antioxidant and it increases cellular production of glutathione, a substance found in lower amounts in a large variety of physical and mental diseases and disorders, so lower amounts than healthy counterparts is called the master antioxidant, this glutathione. Or, so those are the two possibilities. It could be both of these mechanisms together, actually. But the second, the nonspecific increase of glutathione means that NAC is basically an overall health-promoting supplement, which is why it's so popular for so many reasons. Okay, so research has shown that NAC may help with trichotillomania, hair pulling, with nail biting, OCD, depression, bipolar disorder, gambling addiction, nicotine, marijuana, and cocaine dependency, alcohol hangovers, detoxing heavy metals like mercury and lead, also detoxing pesticides and other substances. It can work for PCOS, it can be helpful. Uh, it, it's used also for preventing premature birth and pregnancy loss, um, improving muscle performance. So a lot of people, a lot of athletes take it 
Also, they've seen it's beneficial for Alzheimer's, for Parkinson's, for flu, chronic bronchitis. NAC is also good for our immune system. So this is from a classic 1997 paper on flu, and we're seeing in A, this is the effect of NAC on cell-mediated immunity. So first of all, on the left side, we have the placebo. On the right side, we have when NAC is given. And energy is basically no immune reaction. Um, this is the placebo. It decreases the percentage of people having no immune response. Then hypergy <laughs> is like meh, a little bit less than good response. And normal G is a normal immune response, and that increases over time when the patients were given 600 milligrams of NAC per day in seniors. And then B, this is an effect on the flu. So when NAC was given, all these flu symptoms decreased by quite a bit compared to the placebo. And actually, only 25% of the virus-infected subjects in the NAC group even developed flu symptoms, while 79% of the subjects in the placebo group did. So this is raising the question now. This is actually a review article on NAC as a potential COVID treatment. So they are asking the question, can NAC administration benefit COVID-19 patients? All right, so good question. Now, since May, you cannot get NAC on Amazon anymore, and I'll tell that interesting story in a moment. What about Whole Foods, which is owned by Amazon? So it shows up on the website here. You can see so sold in Chattanooga East. And I went to Chattanooga East. This is where you can so, see the little right, slot where right, the NAC right, would be, but it is not there. Similarly at Walmart, there's no, actually there's no spot for the NAC, so I'm not sure they ever sold it, although it is, available online from them, but through, uh, sold by something so, else, full food or Walmart. I also checked in my Walgreens and CVS, same story, they were not there. You might as well just buy direct, so if you have a local nutrition shop, go there, or you can get it on swanson.com. I got some just a few weeks ago for Hashimoto's, so this is an autoimmune disease. Autoimmune is partly caused by intestinal permeability or leaky gut, so this is extremely common too, and this Isabella Wentz um, explains why NAC can help with that too. So why can't we get NAC on Amazon anymore? Okay, story. <laughs> the story goes, in July of 2020, the FDA sent warning letters to seven supplement companies who were selling hangover remedies containing NAC, stating that because NAC was originally approved as a drug back in 1963, that it was not lawful as a supplement. Now, never mind that this approval was nearly 60 years ago, that was for an inhaled version of NAC, that oral supplements have been on sale for 30 years or so, and that the FDA has mentioned NAC as a supplement. It's called it a supplement in previous communications multiple times. You know, after that, lawyers at the Trade Association for Supplement Manufacturers, the Council for Responsible Nutrition, or CRN, wrote to the FDA with several legal arguments urging the organization to reconsider its sudden change of policy in suddenly not permitting the sale of NAC supplements. The FDA is still reviewing the CRN letter, and so the fate of NAC supplements is still uncertain. They've said it's unlawful, but they haven't enforced really anything yet, aside from those seven hangover remedies. However, in May 2021, Amazon.com removed NAC from its site, just in case. And as of now, it's still widely available on other websites and in stores, but it's possible the FDA may aggressively enforce a ban in the future. So why would they do that? Why now? So because NAC has shown effectiveness in combating flu and other lung diseases, researchers began testing it right away against COVID-19 and it showed promising results also. 
There are currently 18 studies of NAC on COVID listed on clinicaltrials.gov. The warning letters were sent by the FDA to those seven companies in July of 2020. So it's quite coincidental, the dates. If NAC is available as an inexpensive, readily available supplement, how will pharmaceutical companies make money? Why would the FDA care if drug companies make money? Well, let's talk about how the FDA is funded. So it used to be solely from taxpayer money or taxpayer dollars at work. However, interesting story. So back in the 1980s, there was a lot of frustration of how long it took to create drugs for HIV AIDS. And so in 1992, Congress passed the Prescription Drug User Fee Act, and then President Bush signed it into law. Now, 45% of the total FDA budget, and actually 65% of its human drug regulatory activities are paid by pharmaceutical companies each time, plus ongoing fees, whenever they submit a drug for review. These companies and the FDA negotiate the user fees and performance measures and how much time the FDA will take to approve or reject a new drug application. They negotiate. The FDA and the companies negotiate. So question could be, is the FDA more interested in consumers' health or in the financial health of the drug companies? Okay, I'll let you decide. So have you found NAC personally helpful for your skin picking or hair pulling or any other conditions that you have or your general overall health? Let us know in the comments. Uh, if you do use it, will you be stocking up just in case? I'm also interested, let us know. I'll put some links for further reading. If you enjoyed and appreciated this video, give it a thumbs up and let us know your thoughts as well in the comments.